So with westerns making quite a comeback at the moment, it's no surprise that more and more are being announced for the future. So let's take a look at 10 of the most promising western movies and TV shows currently in the works that are likely to arrive in the next couple of years. So at number 10, we have a new feature film biopic about Billy the Kid, starring Barry Keoghan as the titular gunslinger. And the film is set to be helmed by Bart Layton, best known for directing American Animals, which was apparently where Keoghan first introduced the idea to the director. Because growing up as an orphan with a complicated childhood, the actor had always felt a connection to Billy the Kid and was fascinated by his history, especially the conflicting eyewitness accounts and stories that fed into his legacy. So this biopic sounds like it will aim to be much more grounded and authentic than past efforts, with Keoghan explaining there's a soul and vulnerability to Billy that I think is important to bring, to understand him as a real person rather than the myth that he's become. So it's clear that this new Billy the Kid biopic is quite the passion project for all involved, with Leighton aiming to start production on the movie in the first half of 2024. Next up, we have a new untitled action-adventure western movie from Amazon about the real-life historical figure Kate Warne, starring Emily Blunt. And in the film, she's set to play the first woman to ever work for the Pinkerton Detective Agency, exploring the true story of how Kate Warne changed the nature of detective work for years to come. So it sounds a lot like Sherlock Holmes meets the English, promising to be a propulsive action thriller helmed by Black Adam director Jaime Colette Serra. And this makes a lot of sense given that Dwayne Johnson is attached to produce the film alongside Emily Blunt for his Seven Bucks production company. And despite conversations about the movie being put on hold during the Hollywood strikes, everything seems to suggest that this new Western biopic will enter production very soon. Up next, we have The Harder They Fall 2, a sequel to the 2021 Western directed by James Samuel for Netflix. And for those who haven't seen it, the film featured numerous real-life black historical figures from the Wild West, brought together in a fictional plot full of stylized action and big-name stars, which upon its release was applauded by critics and viewers alike. So given its positive reception and cliffhanger ending, it seemed as if The Harder They Fall might be the start of an ongoing franchise. However, there have been no updates ever since, until James Samuel finally revealed that there is in fact a sequel currently in the works at Netflix. So it seems that The Harder They Fall 2 is on its way, but might just be delayed because of the various strikes and the recent drama surrounding its star, Jonathan Majors. At number 7, we have a new untitled western movie from Oscar-winning director and screenwriter Alexander Payne, best known for films like Sideways and Election. And following the release of his most recent movie, The Holdovers, Payne revealed that he's long wanted to make a western, and already has one in development, set in Nebraska during the 1880s further explaining that the film will be the product of deep research and aims to be as historically accurate as possible, citing The Revenant and McCabe and Miss Miller as inspiration in regards to bringing more difficult environments from the past to life on the big screen. And according to script co-writer David Hemmingson, the film already has a role earmarked for Paul Giamatti and promises to be like no western you have ever seen before. It will be recognisable within the genre and it will have certain other tropes, but we intend to turn them on their head. So definitely one to keep an eye out for, probably sometime in 2025. Up next, we have a new TV reboot of The Magnificent Seven from Amazon, set to be written by Nick Pizzolatto, the creator of True Detective. Now initially, he was set to create a totally new Western series for Amazon Studios, but given that he previously co-wrote the 2016 Magnificent Seven movie, the studio convinced him to reboot the 1960 original instead, which will apparently be very much in the tradition of the great epics from the golden age of Westerns. So as you would expect, this new show will follow a group of seven gunslingers, this time uniting to defend a settlement of immigrant homesteaders in an open range war against cattle barons in central Texas, promising lots of adventure, action and romance. Now admittedly, it's hard to imagine any reboot living up to the original movie, but the idea of the mind behind True Detective writing a western TV show sounds very promising. 
Next, we have a new TV adaptation of the Dark Tower book series by Stephen King, helmed by acclaimed horror director Mike Flanagan, best known for shows like The Haunting of Hill House and Midnight Mass. Now, the Dark Tower book series is widely considered to be Stephen King's magnum opus, which is probably best described as an epic dark fantasy western, comprised of seven books following a lone gunslinger traveling across a post-apocalyptic world in pursuit of the titular Dark Tower. Now, due to its complex, multi-layered narrative, the novel has long been considered unfilmable, with the failed 2017 film all but proving this to be the case. However, as a lifelong fan of the novels, Mike Flanagan seems determined to give The Dark Tower the faithful adaptation that it deserves, obtaining both the rights and the blessing of Stephen King to turn the series into a five-season TV show and two movies, which the director has already started developing. Up next, we have a new film adaptation of Empire of the Summer Moon by S.C. Gwen, set to be written and directed by Yellowstone creator Taylor Sheridan. And apparently, this has been a long-standing passion project for Sheridan, who is a huge fan of the book, which features a detailed historical account of the four-decade struggle between the Comanche tribe and settlers for control of the American West. So the movie will likely be very much in the same vein as 1883, with the book's author believing that nobody is better qualified than Taylor Sheridan to bring Empire of the Summer Moon to the big screen, explaining that he's thrilled that he is undertaking this project. He has a deep and nuanced understanding of both the myth and reality of the Old West. So much like Kevin Costner, it seems that once Sheridan is finished up with Yellowstone, his attention will turn to directing a large-scale Western movie, which could rival the likes of Horizon. Also on the way is a mysterious Western movie from acclaimed director Ridley Scott, who is set to start work on the project as soon as he's finished up with Gladiator 2. Now, although not much is known about the film, Scott has described it as a bucket list project, and many in the know believe that it's a film adaptation of the novel Wraiths of the Broken Land, written by the director of Bone Tomahawk. And the reason for this speculation is because all the way back in 2016, Scott announced that he would be teaming up with Drew Goddard to adapt the novel, which follows a father and son in the early 1900s who assemble an outlaw gang and set out across the Badlands to rescue two kidnapped sisters. So if this new western does end up being an adaptation of Wraiths of the Broken Land, you can expect the film to be very cinematic and gritty, which sounds pretty perfect for Ridley Scott, who's teased that he could start work on the movie as early as 2024. At number two, we have Young Guns 3, alias Billy the Kid, set to be written and directed by Emilio Estevez himself. Now, rumors of a third Young Guns movie have been circulating for years now, but actor Lou Diamond Phillips has confirmed that Estevez has already completed a wonderful script, which will reunite the surviving regulators for one last adventure, with many of the original actors reprising their roles, including Lou Diamond Phillips, Christian Slater, and Emilio Estevez. Now, how this will be made possible within the logic of the first two movies is yet to be seen, but Estevez has teased that the history of Billy the Kid is so expansive that there's an opportunity to not only make part three, but also part four and five as well. And although the sequel is currently being delayed by a rights issue, Estevez has recently expressed optimism that he will be able to direct a third Young Guns movie very soon. And finally, at number one, we have the long-awaited movie adaptation of Blood Meridian, written by Cormac McCarthy, who also wrote No Country for Old Men and The Road. However, Blood Meridian is by far his most infamous and well-regarded works, following a 14-year-old boy in 1850s America who falls in with a group of murderous rangers on the US-Mexican border. Now, the novel is widely regarded as one of the greatest works of American literature and one of the best Western novels ever written, but due to its graphic violence and unconventional narrative, three high-profile attempts at adapting it have all ended in failure. Although, this fourth attempt from New Regency looks to be the one that will buck the trend, with the proposition director John Hillcoat signing on to direct a movie adaptation of the novel, scripted by McCarthy himself before his passing. So of all the promising westerns currently in the works, I would say that a faithful big screen adaptation of Blood Meridian has to take the top spot as the most exciting. 
But let me know below which of these westerns you think sounds the most promising. And if you enjoyed this video, you might also want to check out this one right here.